Moto America on BN Sports is presented by Dunlop Motorcycle Tires, the only motorcycle tires designed, tested, and made in America for how you ride. And powered by Kawasaki. Let the good times roll. Back at Pitt Race in Wampum, Pennsylvania, the west side of Pennsylvania, close to the Ohio border, trying to draw some fans in here from our old mid-Ohio crowd. And you can see Tony Elias. I uh, think that's Tony. I think that's Tony. Maybe, uh, I don't know, what he's cooling himself off or? Uh, but, you know, one rider who put on a heck of a show in the Bizzazz Superstock 1000 class was Bobby Fong, and that Kawasaki rider is with Hannah. That's right, Bobby. Yesterday, I didn't get a chance to catch up with you after the race. You came from pretty far back to pull off the win at the last minute. It was a really exciting finish for you. Tell us about if you've made any changes for today or if you have the same strategy as yesterday, maybe. Um, yeah, yesterday was a good race. You know, uh, fortunately, we got the win. But uh, we made some minor changes today, hopefully, to stick with the front pack a little sooner so I don't have to work so hard at the end of the race. But I'm uh, going to give it my all and just race myself on the bike and see what happens in the end. All right, best of luck to you. Thanks, Bobby. All right, so Bobby on the Quicksilver latest Motorsports Kawasaki. Then nah, that crew made some slight changes to get him off the bottom of the forks when we get to the places that have the G out effect. So like say the bottom of turn number five, uh, turn number one and 18. Yep. A good look at our pole sitter, Roger Hayden on the 95 Yoshimura Suzuki. Yep, and Roger's done very good about getting that bike on pole position and I know he's hungry for a win. I'm looking at Jake Lewis there. Um, Jake was right in the front of that that pack of super bikes yesterday, as was Matthew Skultz. And there's your pick, Jake Gagne, who yeah. I love. I love the pick. I'd love nothing more than to see Jake Gagne put it on the podium. Um, yeah, I think he's deserving, and, and he rode so well yesterday. And you said, Greg, you know, he did that yesterday with, with – you know, lack of a lot of the electronics that a lot of these guys have. So Tony Elias, I talked to his crew chief, and uh, we had a conversation. It was the right side of the tire that ended up getting chewed up. It was probably of, of what Dunlop told me, of all the top superbike riders, it was the worst. So they've made some changes on the suspension to manage that. Jake Lewis, getting to about a lap 12, he started to experience some front-end chatter. So he and his M4 X-Star Suzuki crew went to work, and they actually changed the rear end of that motorcycle, Jason, and they changed some shock and some linkages to actually get the front to work a little bit better, especially when Jake gets beyond that kind of eight laps to go area. So we'll see if those changes are going to pay off for him. He's also going to make a change to the medium front. He ran the soft front, so that could be something really big. Um, something maybe a little bit more durable underneath him. Mm-hmm, exactly. And as for Cameron Bobier, well, he had an absolute weapon of a motorcycle yesterday. Subtle changes for he and his Monster Energy Yamalube Yamaha factory racing machine as Bobier has just got the feel right now, Jason. It's just they made that front end change a few races ago, and all of a sudden it just woke Cameron and his crew up. And Cameron knows that it's going to be – Incredible if he can hold on to that number one plate, but he wants to put up the best fight possible. He can throw. He can definitely throw down some uh, some race results at the end of the year. As you look at our Dunlop grid here, Roger Hayden on pole. Tony Elias lines up next to him. Jake Lewis all Suzuki front row. Cameron Bobier, Matthew Skultz, and Josh Hayes. I'm looking forward to seeing Josh get a better start today mm -hmm. and get himself in the mix early. I believe that's going to happen. Danny Estick, Jake Gagne, and Kyle Wyman on row three. Kyle faded just a little bit yesterday, so hopefully they made some changes to get him a little bit more comfortable. Bobby Fong, Anthony West, Sylvain Berrier, round out row four. Talk to some of the guys in Sylvain's team today. They said this is like a big test for them. Hayden Gillum, David Anthony, Jason DeSalvo, and then rounding out uh, the row six there is Bryce Prince and Mike Flinders. Jason DeSalvo, of course, back in race action. We saw him a couple of times. He's on that WD-40. Just happens to be a great number for Jason DeSalvo, also sponsored by Hayes Brakes. And from what we understand out in Germany, the folks from Hayes Brakes are watching this broadcast awesome. now that Moto America is available all across the world. So welcome the world to Moto America racing here in the United States. And yesterday's Superbike race was incredible as most of the way through the race until Cameron Bobier pulled the pin, we saw seven Motul Superbike and Bizzazz Superstock 1000 bikes going after the lead. And two of those guys, Bobby Fong and Josh Hayes weren't really part of that group because Bobby was so far back at the start and Josh ran off in turn one. So literally we could have nine guys really at the, in this front lead group potentially uh, when we get this race started. I think uh, uh, the, uh, a couple of the more super stock bikes that weren't there yesterday could be there today. All right, well, let's get the JP keys to the race here, Jason, because um, 
we got quite a few of them. Yeah, well, I think the big question is, can Bobia get to the front sooner? And by that, I mean, can he get a better start? Can he lead some of the opening early laps? Can he not let somebody else dictate the pace at the front? I think that that's key because Cameron's got a lot of pace, got a lot of roll speed through these, especially through all these little lessons that you see Josh Hayes and Bobby Fong and the rest of the guys coming through. I think if Cameron can get up front, it could be interesting. Bobby Fong, consistency. Uh, the consistency that he ran in that race yesterday, he kind of let the race come back to him. He didn't get um, too worried when he saw everybody pulling away from him. And the consistent lap times he did, next thing you know, he was at the front of that super stock grid with one uh, race with one lap to go and was able to make some passes uh, to get the victory issues. As you see him going through the chicane there and clipping that curving. What about birthday boy, Jake Gagne today? <laughs> Another year older, getting closer, isn't he, Greg? It's yep. good to see that Honda um, you know, showing some promise. And uh, we, nobody has ever doubted the ability of Jake Gagne himself, but it was really nice yesterday to see him closer. He was in our frame a lot in that lead group yesterday, and let's hope that we can see a little bit more of that because the diversity that we have at the front, we've got Kawasaki's and Suzuki's and Yamaha's. It's great to see a Honda in there also now. So happy birthday to Jake Gagne and his broster chicken. Honda team, let's get out of Hannah who has our Motul last minute report, Hannah. Well, JP just stole it because huh. it was my last minute report that it's Jake Gagne's birthday. Hopefully that'll bring him a little bit more luck today. Maybe that's why he's he's riding so well this weekend, but it was really nice to be down in the pits and seeing his team smiling yesterday and celebrating. And it's his birthday today, so hopefully they'll have some extra celebrations to do this afternoon. Yeah, definitely yeah. like virtually a win. And I'm not liking what I'm seeing there. They look like a lot of concern on Jake Gagne's face coming to the line there, and I'm not sure what's going on. So let's keep an eye on that that Honda there in the middle of your screen as we get ready to go, Greg. So here we go, race number two, the final race in Moto America here at Pit Race, and we're underway. The clutches are out, and it looks like Tony Elias with a good launch, as did our pole sitter, Roger Hayden. So into turn number one, Elias with his foot out, and Cameron Bobier tried to sweep around the outside, but he's gonna get back to fourth. Yeah, that's gonna cost him. He just got in there a little deep. I think he was trying to get to the front a little earlier, like I had mentioned in the keys to the race, and just got himself running just a little bit wide early. Now he's got a superstar bike in front of him and Skultz goes around. You see Danny yep. Eslick, but Skultz rode around the outside of Cameron Bobier as they peeled off down into turn number four there. And uh, Raj, right off the bat, looking racy at the front, opening up a small gap. So this sector up through turn number seven, we're gonna be heading into split number two from this point all the way to turn 15. And talking to Roger Hayden's crew, they felt that that was the big deal. And Skultz advances his way into third, into fourth place. So right now, Roger Hayden's in the sector where he and his team worked all night long to try to get sorted out. Josh Hayes, Greg, has just, has just gone by Lewis, he's gone by Bobier, and this is the problem that I kind of see just a little bit sometimes with Cameron, the intensity level at the start of these races. He's He was literally went off into turn one almost in the lead and now he's all the way back to six or seven this makes his race a lot harder now these super stock bikes are not easy to path and look at matthew skultz on that on that yama on that uh westby racing r1 trying his best to get around tony elias right now he's disposed of a bunch of people on this opening lap and uh, oh, oh he jumps skultz. over the curb he's across the grass save now. it save it save it he does a good job matthew skultz so that could have been disaster for the field being this tight and this early on in the race. But the Yamalu Westby Racing number 11 holds on to it. But Fong now going up the inside. And Cameron Bobia was able to get by Jake Lewis and then that mistake by Skultz gave him another spot. So that, that, that other spot came relatively easily. But look who's on the charge. Number four, Josh Hayes has got the start that he needed. Told me yesterday, or told me this morning, that he had some, he felt a lot better on the bike than he had been feeling. But what about Raj Hayden? First lap right out of the box. 1.1 second lead for Raj this morning, who led morning warm up. Is he going to try to transfer that now into a race win right now, Greg? He's getting away and he's making it look easy. So his teammate. Tony Elias in second spot right now has had an incredible run this season. Tony, uh, when he stands on the podium, it's either first or second, hasn't even finished third, and he's only, only had one DNF all season long in an incident earlier on in the season. So right now, Josh Hayes talking to his crew chief. We talked about the pace that Josh Hayes has, that there is no one better in this field that can settle into a lap time than Josh Hayes. If he could pull off a 44-7 now, he could probably do it all the way to the end of the race. Yeah, well, he's gonna have to get into the 42s. That's what these guys are gonna be down to, 41s probably, Greg. You know, that was from a standing start, that opening lap. So the thing is, is that 
He's going to be able to get on the back of Tony. Josh isn't going to mess around. You know, Josh is going to do everything he can to get by Tony Elias as quickly as he can. And see what I mean with Cameron? Cameron's right there now. He's he's he, you know, got shuffled back a little bit at the beginning of the lap, but now he's right back on the back of his teammate and Elias. Josh Hayes on the brakes, foot out on that one. If Josh Hayes' foot goes out, you know he's in there deep, and that's gonna cost him a couple of bike lengths at this point. Number four is Josh Hayes on that Monster Energy Yamalube Yamaha factory racing machine. So it's our typical four up front, but man, Roger Hayden is really growing down early on. I mean, this is, look at that. 41-1, Greg, to give you an instance, this morning in morning warm-up, he was at 41-2, and he led uh, all, all the time, uh, the top of the time sheets this morning with a 41-2. So on his first flying lap, he's already gone quicker. Josh Hayes is going to do everything he can to try to get himself by Tony. Now, they're coming here into turn three. You're going to see him go left, quick flick, downhill, back to the right. And then this is all straight downhill. And we're going to be trying to watch this gap. It's up to 1.8 now does Raj have at the front. But this is where Josh needs to get a little bit closer so that he can try to do something with Tony when they go down into turn seven. Cameron yesterday was really strong down this hill going into turn seven. He passed Elias. He's trying to get up alongside of his teammate right now, and he can't. And how about Matthew Skultz? He made that, that little mistake early. He's been able to pull himself away from Bobby Fong ever so slightly to get himself back up into this battle with these super bikes. And, of course, Matthew Skultz in a Pizzazz Superstock 1000 title fight. As we look at Tony Elias, who sits on 65 points ahead of Cameron Bobier in his bid for his first Moto America title in the United States. The former Moto2 world champion, now racing here in the US. Former MotoGP winner as well. So Tony Elias on the Yoshimura Suzuki. I mentioned earlier that he and his crew worked on the motorcycle to try to get the rear end of that, make basically the right side of that tire to comply a little bit better. But just looking at these lap times right now, I mean, 41.8 isn't anything shabby. It's just the fact that Roger Hayden is just on fire right now. Just goes out and runs 41.1. Yesterday, I believe 41.2 was the fastest lap of the race yesterday. That was by Cameron Bodian. So, uh, you know, I'm looking, I'm looking even further back right now, just seeing who's coming across. Gagne is now going to start to charge. It looks like Tony's in a little bit deep. Gets the thing controlled, though. Gets it slowed down. You see him just run a little bit wide there, Greg. Yeah. But let's see if Josh was able to get close enough. Now, and it looks like Josh got Cameron. Josh must have made a mistake, too, because maybe Tony getting a little deep kind of drew Josh in there a little bit deep also. It looks like Bobier got around him, and he did. So the number one plate by his teammate, Hayes. Jake Gagne just off in the distance there on that red motorcycle, just out of tow right now from Matthew Skoltz. And that team talked to me about making adjustments to that Honda CBR1000RR. It was this moment of the race, the first five to six laps that they were trying to get better traction out of that CBR1000R because they looked at the race tires afterwards on Jake Gagne's motorcycle, and they said these things look absolutely great, and Jake said he had no problems. So it was trying to get it to go better so he could get that better start. Like I said, there was a lot of look and concern on Jake Gagne's face when we did that last minute report by Hannah down there. And uh, I'm hoping that whatever whatever he was feeling has gone away and he's able to just kind of keep his head down and keep focusing on these three ahead of him. That's the Superbike podium right in front of him right now. And uh, what can you say about Matthew Skultz? Talking to Chuck and the team down there, they're not really interested in beating any of the Superbikes. That's kind of been their mantra all year long. They just want to focus on the Superstock Championship. But what do you do when you're quite a bit faster than a couple of the Superbikes in front of you? Well, you stop charging or do you keep moving forward? And I think that Matthew's got to keep moving forward. Not to mention, Jason, he's on a Yamaha and he's got he's got two factory Superbike Yamahas that are right up ahead of him. And if Skoltz puts himself between, you know, if he puts himself between the factory bikes and the Yoshimura bikes, there's a points loss. I'm not saying that there's team orders at all, yep. but it's something that you definitely have to think about. Yeah. Genuine Broster Chicken, Honda CBR 1000R SP2. That's Jake Gagne right now sitting in sixth spot yesterday. A very impressive fourth place, causing the team to blow up some balloons and celebrate hard last night till about 9.30 at night. Yeah, Usually they're working awesome. on the bike, so they had a good uh, a good little break for them. How about Raj? 2.3 lead, still doing 41s, 41.5. Guys behind him are at 41.7. Cameron Bovey is the danger man, though, Greg, 41.3. Yep. He just got this, this guy gets through, and he's going to have a go right now in turn seven. If he gets through, it's going to be it's going to be hard work for Raj. Raj is going to have to just keep those times consistent and pace himself the way he's paced himself right now. Uh, right now, Raj is just looking straight ahead, hitting all of his marks, doing a fantastic job. 
but it's going to be difficult for Cameron Bobier to get by Tony. We already know that going in. No question, Jason. But if Cam Bobier can get by Tony in, in short order here, he's really got to think about his teammate Josh Hayes if Josh can close down on Tony Elias and put himself between, you know, put Josh in between. And what about Skoltz? Could he help Yamaha's effort? Because the more positions Tony's back, the closer this championship's going to get is. Wow, that was really close as Cam Bobier closed right up on the 24. Through the chicane they go. Get some oh. water. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, no, it's fine. I saw that foot come off that bike. That might have Absolutely. been a little close to that curb, Jay. See how, see how tight Tony runs it into the last corner? He's just closing off, closing the door. He's making it hard. He's, his bike is moving around a lot right. more under initial throttle, and that's going to help Cameron. Cameron's trying to go around the outside of him here. Maybe he's going to cross back underneath him as they go into turn one. Let's have a look here. Now Rogers opened up to a 3.1 second lead. Wow. He's over a second quicker, or just about a second quicker than his teammate. And you can see right now, Tony's doing his teammate a huge favor by holding up these two Yamahas like he is right this second. I don't think Tony's got the feel he was looking for. Nope. And, uh, and the right side edge grip. Uh, the right side edge grip. See how he kind of is moving himself over to the spots, closing off the entries very early. So what that's going to basically make it hard, harder for Cameron to make is a pass, and that's when it could start to get a little bit a little bit iffy as far as um, how we're going to get by this guy. What are we going to do? We're going to have to force something to get by to get by Tony now. Bobier right there. He's trying to make that move. He's using the corners to try to square up Tony Elias. And oh, he almost Tried. had it. He really almost had it, Jason. Yep. You can see that start three corners ago. But Tony Tony knows he's running a little bit wide in that left before that double right. And Cameron was able to square him up. Look at the run he gets here. He just gets, oh, wow. He made that look Beautiful. so easy as they went through that fast kink. That's a big move by Cameron Bobier. And now Tony Elias is going to come under fire. Now, we saw this yesterday, though, where Tony's leading the pace. He doesn't quite have it, but he's going to latch onto the back of Bobier. And so even though it got close there for a second, we might see Tony try to latch onto the back of Cam and eek away from Josh Hayes. It already looks like that's going on here in just these few moments. Well, I'm looking forward to see this last split and see if it's a quick one. The last split there is three tenths quicker than Raj was Cameron just in that last split. We're looking 41.7 to 41.7. Now it's going to be a matter of being able to keep an eye on this chart that we have in front of us to see what sectors it looks like Cameron can or cannot close up on Raj. Because when they went across the time, they lap that time, 3.2 seconds. 12 laps to go, Jason. 3.2 seconds the advantage. That means that Cam Bobier, on average, is going to have to, just for some quick math, probably about four tenths a second a yep. lap in order to really reel Roger in and have a chance to do that. So Roger's got to keep it clean wow. because any mistake in Cam Bobier is going to be on him in moments. 3.2 seconds now, the margin for for Roger Hayden. This is the race that Roger's been looking for all year long, especially Cam, since we came here in May. Cam's bike looked amazing going up turn six up that big steep hill just now. It looks so stable and just on, on a rail. So a couple guys I'm surprised about. No Danny Eslick, he's back in ninth, and Jake Lewis back in tenth. So a couple guys that we saw at the front of this group yesterday aren't there today, so we're not sure what's going on with those two. Pace at the front right now. Uh, Rog is holding his own in that first sector, about, about a tenth of a second difference between the two. This is a section here where Cameron was really fast earlier. Really fast earlier, and this is where, as we get into the middle part of this race, tire wear is going to become a factor. Roger Hayden, Cam Bobier, Tony Elias, Josh Hayes, Matthew Skoltz, Jake Gagne, Bobby Fong, Sylvain Ferrier, as we've seen that before from Cam Bobier, a very aggressive slide. Man, he's got good grip, though, right now, G-Dub, when he's, when he's getting that bike turned and just, just picked up on the edge of the tire. You can see that Yamaha really driving forward. Not a lot of bad stuff going on there. He's trimmed it down to 2.9. We're looking at a 41.5 for Raj and a 41.2 for Cameron. That was Cameron. three tenths. So, that was three tenths. Yep. 11 laps to go on this one. So next time by, Roger's going to see on the board that it's starting to shrink. So we'll see if, if Roger has anything in the tank, anything in the tire to start to drop the times. Roger Hayden does have the fastest lap of the race. He did it on lap two, a 41.1. Bobier just did his fastest lap of the race, lap seven, as did Tony Elias and Josh Hayes and Jake Gagne. So those riders just did their fastest laps last time by the stripe. So they're all pushing forward. So Cam Bobier is really starting to set the pace and push the issue for second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth. Yeah, and, and right now, you, you brought up a great point. Cameron's just focusing on that 95. He wants to get up there and do something, and he's going to be hoping that his teammate can maybe try to get by Tony here. Finish first with 25 points. You know, if, if somehow Tony finishes fourth, 13, that's 
12 valuable points uh, and then starts to make this championship a viable again for the young rider. And uh, just looking at these splits again, it's the same splits for everybody in the first four through the first sector. And look at Josh Hayes. Josh Hayes just made the pass wow. on Tony Elias. He saw his teammate do that earlier in that fast kink, but he, and Josh did the exact same thing. Well, and Josh looked for a moment that he might have out, out break himself, out broke himself into that chicane, but he was really able to keep it nice and tidy. And so already two or three bike lengths between himself and Tony Elias as we come up to the top of this racetrack. And you gotta wonder, Grant, you said something earlier, that might give Matthew Skultz a little motivation. Maybe he doesn't want to get up there and mess with those Yamahas too much. You know his plus, Matthew Skultz's plus, is back to the closest super stock bike. But now he might be thinking, all right, I got the pace where I can maybe get by Tony myself and, and try to go after those two guys or just kind of continue to extend his lead. And help Yamaha's effort in Absolutely. the long run. Yes. Because it is a Yamaha-supported effort, is the Yamalu Waiya, or the, the Yamalu Westby Racing effort. And it doesn't hurt when your manufacturer says, Atta boy, thanks for helping out in this points championship. So, very unusual territory for Tony Elias right now in terms of this point in the race. We've seen Tony start behind and charge forward. This is the first time I, I can remember seeing him actually going backwards. Hey, he's still there. He's done oh, I know he before. is. A couple times where we go, oh, Tony's going backwards. He's losing touch. And then all of a sudden he comes back late in the race. And, but, uh, and Jason Skultz is right there. He is, but Jake Gagne is charging yes. on Matthew Skultz, and he might upset the party a little bit. The thing is, is that that crew down there, the Westby team, there's a bunch of smart guys. They're giving Jake that sort of plus three or plus four back to Bobby Fong. And that's all that Matthew's really worried about right now. Uh, I said Jake, but I meant Matthew. They're giving Matthew Skultz that, that time of how big his lead is. So if he starts getting a lot of pressure from Gagne and he doesn't feel like he wants to really fight with him, you might see him just let Gagne go through. But right now, Raj is riding so superbly at the front of this. And look at Josh Hayes. Josh is closing that gap up to sure his is. teammate now all of a sudden. Absolutely. Josh just went the quickest second split of the race at a 34.2 uh, compared to his teammates 34.5 that time. So all of a sudden now, Josh is starting to really try to go forward. Both Yamahas look tremendous in the corner. So Roger now answers with a 41.2 to a 41.6. Hayes, for a moment, went 41.1. So Josh Hayes just goes fastest lap of the race. There's Fong Back on the in. Quicksilver latest motorsports Kawasaki ZX-10R, number 50, Fong. We saw him do that last lap yesterday where Fong backed her in. And I talked to his crew chief. Remember that? Remember that last lap pass going into turn one? He yep. backed it in. Yep. He lost the front twice. They saw it on the data where he lost the front, got off the brakes, got it, turned it back in, lost the front again, got off the brakes. When Bobby Fong is in race mode and he turns his brain off, he is one of the fastest riders <laughs> absolutely yeah. out there. You know, yep. he was just doing the dirt track thing that Bobby Fong knows how to do. And uh, his crew chief was like, man, someday I'm going to show you the data because it was absolutely incredible to look at the squiggly lines and see how Bobby Fong was able to hold on to turn number one. Yeah, well, that's, uh, you know, Bobby's a racer. He was a little bit worried going into the race yesterday, but you saw what he did. Now, looking at the times, Greg, I'm really psyched to see the Rogers being able to hold that pace, 3.1 seconds in the front. That's what he's got to be able to do, and if that's comfortable for him, that's tremendous. Uh, Josh Hayes right now is charging. He's ca catching up to his teammate. He ran the fastest lap of the race uh, the last time through. And uh, it's going to be interesting to see what Josh does with Cameron. I think he knows that Cameron is is uh, the closest to the championship lead that he is. And he's been such a corporate guy. And uh, we're going to get a look here at Josh. As they came up over the top of the rise, that's Cameron. But if you watch the next people on your screen, Josh uses, maximizes the exit out of turn 14 up over the top of that hill, gets the bike squared up and underneath Tony going into that king. Same move that Cam made Jack on Tony move. earlier. Yep. So Hayes now closing right up on the tailpipe of his teammate. Ah, didn't get that one so no. tidy. Well, it's great. It's so tricky going up over turn one here because it's so blind and it's so hard to get it right lap after lap. You and I have seen more carnage there this weekend than probably any turn that we've seen this year. Here you go, a little further back. Sylvain Barrier battling with Danny Eslick. This is the battle for eighth place. Uh, Sylvain's on a BMW, so uh, Danny's on that, that uh, TOBC Yamaha. And uh, not, couldn't quite get up alongside of Savannah enough there. But talking to the crew today with Savannah Barry, they said, you know, Jay, this is kind of a test for us. We're, we're out there testing. They didn't come here and test. They're looking forward to Jersey and Barber uh, and some of those places. But uh, they're going to just continue to try to make this BMW work better for Savannah. Savannah's won a uh, FIM World Superstock Championship on one of these BMWs about two or three years ago. So uh, he's raced World Superbike on BMW. So he's got a lot of 
lot of ties with the company. So then Barrier number 28 to Danny Eslick on the 69. So Eslick losing a little bit of ground there. Just to give you an idea of what's going on up front. Last time by, Roger Hayden lost another couple tenths to Cambobi and Josh Hayes. And Roger Hayden's lead is down to 2.7 seconds. But it's eight laps to go. And you can see there's Roger Hayden in your frame. So Roger Hayden well within sights of Camp Bovier and Josh Hayes right now. And now Bovier really spotted this lap because he's pulled away from Josh just a little bit too. Yeah. We're getting close to that. Going to seven laps to go as we look at Jake Gagne. Genuine roaster chicken on a Yamalu. Westby Racing R1 as Gagne is trying to reel in that super stock bike. 2.1 now, Greg. So 41.6 to a 41 flat. Fastest lap of the race, Cameron Bobie. 41 flat, almost into the 40s. And uh, that's tremendous. You know, he pulled away from Josh there. Josh went 41.4. And uh, you can see the gap now. This is where Cameron's so good. He can just chip away these laps. Oh, oh wow. No. Hayden Gillum into the tire wall. That's turn one, Greg. That bike went up over the top of the barrier. I wouldn't be surprised to see this race red flag, Greg. He went into that tire barrier awfully, awfully hard. You can see here, he gets into turn one. Oh, he almost hit the back of Jake Lewis. Now he's off in the grass in a no man's land. He's got a bail, but he bails out in front of the motorcycle and gets into that wall. That bike goes up over the top of the, the barrier. Yeah, red flag, we're getting it now. It's a red flag, of course it's a red flag. That bike's gonna be where these riders are looking right now. If you look, Greg, they're looking over to the right. They see, they could see his bike. His bike went up over the top of that barrier. Wow, so Hayden Gillum on the 169 out of Philpot, Kentucky. That's the Cycle World Suzuki entry. He was having a really good go at it. And uh, that was a huge, huge issue for Hayden Gillum. We certainly hope that Hayden is okay as he hit that tire wall. So a red flag comes out here in this race. And as we revert back to the last lap, We'll have to see what the running order is and what Moto America is going to do. So during a red flag situation, all racing stops and the scoring reverts back to the last lap. There were seven laps to go in this one. So what will Moto America decide to do? It's totally up to them. When this stopped with 11 laps in the books, it was Roger Hayden leading away from Cam Bobier, Josh Hayes. Tony Elias was in fourth, Matthew Skultz in and fifth. Jake Gagne was in sixth, Bobby Fong in seventh, Sylvain Barrier in eighth, Danny Eslick in ninth. Jake Lewis, back in 10th, was having a battle with Hayden Gillum, Anthony West on the Kawasaki in 12th, Bryce Prince in 13th, Kyle Wyman back in 14th, and Jason DeSalvo in 15th spot. So we have red flag conditions here. We're gonna take a break on being sports. So we'll get this whole thing sorted out as Roger Hayden had a 2.7 second lead before the red flag. We'll find out what's going on after. Stay with us. Back here at Pit Race, the Motul Superbike and Bizazz Superstock 1000 classes. We're getting ready to resume a six lap sprint race. This is gonna be very interesting and we're told here in a matter of minutes or maybe less than two minutes that the riders will be released from pit lane and do a warm up and go. That's what we're being told. We'll see. Most of the time, we see a sighting lap, quick grid, a warm up lap and go. So we'll see what the procedure looks like right now. As you can see, the genuine Broster Chicken Honda team. They're doing something to that bike. So whatever Jake was shaking his head or had that concerned look on his face for, maybe they're able to kind of get that fixed now. I'm not sure what that is, Greg, but. All right, let's go down to Hannah, who has Bobby Fong. Is the race restart, this red flag, a bit of an advantage for you or a, a disadvantage, would you say? Um, we'll see. I don't know. I felt like I was just uh, getting into my rhythm. You know, I, I felt like I was catching the guys a little bit at the end where my strong point is right now. But uh, we'll see how uh, we go in the restart. I know a lot of people are going to try to do some dive bombs out there, knowing there's six laps to go. But we're going to play it smart and see what happens. All right. Best of luck. Thanks, Bobby. All right, thank you, Hannah. So we're getting word now that pit lane will open at uh, 10 
minutes after. So just about four and a half minutes or so. And the quick start procedure will be in play. Yeah, so they'll go out, do a siding lap, just come take their grid spots really quick, and then off they'll go. I think it's really hard. You know, Hannah asked a great question there of it's an advantage or not an advantage. It's hard when you have to do these restarts and, you know, you come in and your crew tells you what just happened and why the red flag happened and everyone's holding their breath there for Hayden, obviously. And it puts a rider in a weird spot mentally. You got to you got to try to remember, you know, after you know that Hayden's up, he's OK. That's a big sigh of relief for all the riders right off the bat. And uh, here you go looking at uh, Brocer's Chicken Honda CBR 1000 to Jake Gagne. So I'm not sure. Looks like. Something maybe to do with the rear brake, Greg. I can't nah, tell. Nah, you know no, what it no, is? It's a clutch. clutch. Yep, it's, it's clutch. a clutch. Yep, they're yeah. doing a clutch. I just saw it there at the, the, the end part of that. I could see that it was a clutch. But, you know, uh, you know, Bobby has got to get himself in the mindset of, hey, now I've got that, that bike that was leading right next to me on the grid. Uh, there's not a three or four or five, six seconds. And now it's a new race. Anything can happen. So Especially with six laps to go. I mean, this is a full-blown. They don't have to worry about tires. They don't have to worry about fuel. It's just going to be a go for it kind of situation. And, uh, you know, th this, Jason, we talk about winning championships and you've got to be good and you've got to have a good crew, but you also have to have some luck behind you, don't you? No and question. I think the, the person who, who might make out in all this is going to be Tony Elias because I guarantee you his crew is not sitting back. If he gets a start and can do what he does best, which is put himself in awkward spots and try to ma not make people pass him, um, it could be anybody's race. We could see a big group there. By the way, do you guys have any idea how hard it is to change a clutch when it's that hot, you know? Yeah. So uh, let's get down and see who Hannah's got. You got Cameron Bobia for us, huh, Hannah? Yep, Cam's here. The race restart gives you the opportunity to try and catch up back up to Roger. Is your strategy going to change a little bit, or how's the tire feeling out there for you? Yeah, you know, I, I struggled a little bit to get going there. Uh, kind of got slotted back. Uh, on the restart, I just need to, you know, get the best start I can, put my head down, and, uh, see what happens. I know Raj is going to be really strong, and also uh, Josh behind me. Uh, so, yeah, we'll see what happens. All right. Thanks, Cam. Best of luck. Yeah, you know, and you heard him say that. Thanks, Hannah. You heard him say that he that he uh, was a little bit slow off the start on the last time, more or less just getting your mind in gear to get going right off the bat. There's there's no time for, uh, you know, there's beginning laps where you can make up a lot of time or you can lose a lot of time. And Cameron's just such an amazing rider. It doesn't really matter if he gets a good start or a bad start. He's going to find his way to the front eventually anyways, but it just makes it a little harder on himself. And red flag situations we've talked about. It's our second red flag of the day. Um, you know, you can't really train for a red flag. That's the one thing. You can train for the intensity of a race as much as possible. You can even train uh, race starts and laps and all that kind of stuff. But one thing you've got to live through and just get the experience is red flags. And uh, you know what? It's just something that you've got to do to get your mind back right. All right, so we saw the Genuine Broster Chicken Honda guys working on that motorcycle. Hannah, what about it? Yeah, I'm here with the birthday boy. You know, did really well yesterday. You're running pretty well out there again today. You have a chance to restart and get a little bit further up to the front. How's the bike feeling? How's everything going right now? Well, that's good. Like you said, we had a great yes, great rate yesterday. Uh, we felt good with this Honda all weekend. The Road Race Factory Broster Chicken guys have been working hard. Uh, had a little problem with the quick shifter, so I didn't have a quick shifter, so I was chicken winging it out there pretty good. But these guys are dialing it in right now, and uh, we'll, be, we'll be good for the six laps. Go for it. All right. Good luck. Thanks. Quick shifter, Jason. Yeah, it's just, you know, when you got, when everybody else has one and you don't, it's definitely a disadvantage, you know. It's, I got a lot of my track day friends that are, you know, two minutes off the pace going, well, I need a quick shifter. It's going to help me be faster than everybody. And it's like, well, not quite. But when you're at Jake Gagne's level and everybody else has one, it definitely is uh, a little bit harder for and, you. And, and uh, for those that may be watching for the first time yep. and don't know what a quick shifter necessarily is, it's actually a way for you to upshift your motorcycle without actually having to move the throttle. So you can leave the throttle wide open, and it's an electrical cut that allows just momentarily those clutch plates to release, and you can click up to the next gear so you don't have to, you know, I guess blip the throttle, or you know, roll just out of roll it out of the throttle or use the clutch or, or, the clutch or anything yeah. like that. So... Yep. Well, it looks like uh, pit lane's going to open up here in a matter of 15 seconds or so as the Genuine Broster Chicken Road Race Factory team still frantically works on that motorcycle to make sure they have it all taken care of. You want to make sure that gasket on that side plate is all sealed up because the last thing Jake needs with the six-lap sprint race is going to be a little drip of oil on his yep. boot. Doesn't need that. Look at the first guy is rolling out of pit lane. He is fired Cornelius up. Cornelius is ready to go. You know, the thing about that guy, he just he never believes that he's out of it until the checker flag goes. He just doesn't. But how about this guy, number four? Josh Hayes getting a second shot at it. I believe he'll start from the front row. Uh, and, and 
I tell you right now, on a six-lap restart, if that guy gets the whole shot, he's going to be very, very difficult to pass. He will be. And, um, you know, you got to feel for Raj a little bit. you got to hope that Raj can get off to a really good start, quick start, fast start, and kind of get himself slotted back into where he was. And you know what, Jason? This, this is something that really needs to be talked about. Touched on it yesterday. It was here at the test when Roger's brother, Nicky, when he had his accident in Italy with the car, and they knew at the time what Nikki's condition was and how bad it was. And Roger still went out and he soldiered on and he continued the test. And then he had to go home and deal with what was going on with his now departed brother, Nikki Hayden. Yeah. And ever since that time, there's been some talk, like there's been anticipation of Roger Hayden winning the race and dedicating the race to his brother. And it's just been so close. And coming here and having a 2.7 second lead erased because this is not aggregate time, folks. The way red flags work in Moto America, it's very simple. We are restarting this race from the grid positions, how they finished, everyone finished the last race. But any time advantage he had, any lap times, all those basically get evaporated. So what you see on the racetrack is exactly how the race is gonna end. There's been some years where it's been aggregate in different series, Moto, you know, Moto GP, uh, you know, superbike racing, but this is a heads up six lap sprint race to the finish. So whoever gets to the flag first wins. I think a few of these guys are waiting for Tony Elias to come over the top of the hill after the after what he did at the start of the last time. He just kind of ripped over the top and off into the grass. But there's Tony. He knows. He's got the bike slowed down. He's going to come take his grid spot. I saw a couple of the crew members looking over at Tony, Tony's crew and having a little, little bit of a laugh there. So here comes Josh coming down and getting himself into, into his place. They're just going to keep him here for a few seconds, Greg, and they'll let him go again. If you're tuning in for the Real Madrid versus Valencia game, it'll be coming up here after this race's conclusion. So hang tight and enjoy Moto America Superbike Racing. Real Madrid versus Valencia game is coming up very soon. We have a six-lap sprint race here, and lap times are around 1 minute and 42 seconds. So once we get things going, so they are going to do just this brief, quick lap here. And now we're going to get this warm-up lap going. So there is Roger Hayden. He had a 2.7 second lead with eight laps to go with a charging Cameron Bobier, who's in the middle part of your screen. He is the number one plate. And Josh Hayes on the number four. So it's Yoshimira Suzuki still on pole position and a couple of Monster Energy Yamalube Yamaha factory racing machines. What about Jake Gagne? Did the team get that motorcycle fixed in time? That was quite a quick fix. Very efficient team, but sometimes things can happen. So we'll see if everything's good with that genuine Broster Chicken Road Race Factory Honda CBR 1000. It looks fine, Greg. It yeah. looks good. And so. Matthew Skultz, number 11 on that Yamalu Westby Racing machine. And also, what about Jake Lewis? We'll see if they made any changes yeah, to that. Yeah, what he about was, Jake Lewis? we yeah. got to find out what's going on with Jake. He was uh, racing back in 10th. Yeah, he was, he was winning yesterday. He's running hard. So I'm not sure what's going on there with Jake today. Um, obviously, maybe they've tried something different, and it just hasn't worked at all for him today. But, uh, you, know, and, you know, the thing is, Greg, is we don't know. Maybe he ran off the track early in that last. That, this could be a big reprieve for him. You know, maybe he ran off the track, and, and it was something that we didn't catch. And uh, he was making his way back up. But, yeah, for him to be that back. Let's get down to Hannah. He had a chance to catch up with Jake Lewis briefly during the red flag, and he mentioned that they were making a couple of changes to suspension, so hopefully that will help him out a little bit. I'm not quite sure what the changes were or what was going on, but he was having a problem with the rear feel, so we will see if that helps him improve any uh, as we restart here. Perfect. Thank you so much, Hannah. Good information. So if Jake Lewis all of a sudden the six-lap sprint race starts to charge forward, we know exactly yeah. what's going on. He and his crew coming up with a solution. All right, so Josh Hayes leading the way here on this warm-up lap. So this is it, warm-up lap, then grid and go. If you're just tuning in here to be in sports, expecting to see Real Madrid versus Valencia, that game will be coming up on the backside of this race as soon as we get this concluded. We were under red flag conditions here for Moto America Superbike super bike race action. We had a red flag stoppage, so that's delayed our program a little bit, but this is going to be a mad dash, a six-lap sprint race to the end as we take a look at Jason DeSalvo on his Hayes brakes. WD-40 machine just behind him, Tony Elias. We usually don't see Tony Elias kind of getting out this late in the game. So Tony. Yeah, he's going to come around. He wants to get the, he wants to keep the heat in the tires, Greg, probably. And I saw him put his arm up pretty early. You can see him still on the gas, just trying to get some heat in those tires and make sure that when he's ready to go, he's ready to go. Roger Hayden, 2.7 seconds. Now all for not 
He's got to do it again. Can Roger Hayden get the start he had in the first part of this race? And can he put his head down and get right into the lap times that he needs to keep the pressure on the rest of this field? A lot of emotions for Roger Hayden this weekend. He and his crew working really hard. Last night, they came up with a fantastic solution that they told me solves their issue in sector, split sector number two, which goes between turn seven and turn 15. The red light, upper left-hand part of your screen's going on, and then we're gonna conclude race number two here at Pit Race. Revs up, and we're underway. And Raj got a great start again. Tony Elias got a great start. This is not what Camper Bovier wants, is to have Tony Elias go charging up underneath him. But uh -oh. that's, that's exactly what's gonna happen, Greg. Oh. That's gonna open it up for Josh Hayes. It should, anyways, get Josh up, up close to Cameron as they go up over the top of the hill. But now the fireworks are gonna start. We got six laps to go. Cameron got a good jump. Tony got a better jump. And now it's gonna be a matter of Raj, if Raj can get away early at the front. Roger Hayden trying to find the rhythm that he had. He told Hannah during the red flag that he had a good rhythm going. You can see the disappointment in his face, but Roger has it going on his way right now. Jake Gagne, horrible start. So not sure exactly what happened to him there, but really hard start. Look at Cameron, he's trying to go by Tony, but see how Tony just Ooh. closes off that entry. It's gonna make it hard. This could be the best thing that could happen for Raj if, uh, if he could start to pull away just a little bit, but this is where Tony's so good just gets a hold of you and, and won't let go. And if he can just kind of try to keep up with Raj early, but you can see his bike's just running a little bit wide in that right-hander, Greg. And it's been pretty consistent. Jake, uh, here comes Cameron trying to go up underneath him. So Tony Elias has to live for the moment. Make Cameron, oh, oh yeah, wow. That is huge. Can Cam save it? Yep, he can. But what a huge break there for, for uh, Cameron to not go up over the top of that. Now, Josh Hayes is gonna try to work on Tony Elias to try to go chasing after the number, number 95 of Roger Hayden. And there's Cameron. What has happened to Cameron? Is he hurt, Greg, or? Oh, I mean, I wouldn't doubt that Cameron pulled something trying to hold on to that motorcycle. He looks like he is in a wow. lot of pain. Yeah. He... You can rack some body parts in that one too, Jason. Yes, you can, you really can. It looks like his shoulder. He's pointing maybe to his right maybe arm. Dislocated his right shoulder, possibly. But this is uh, going off the start line here. You can see that Tony has jumped up underneath and uh, just just made the pass going into turn one. As they came in here, Cameron needed to get by. He did not want to be squared up. That's why he's going to get on the gas hard here, snaps himself that way. Now he's going to run off the track, Greg, and he gets the bike in control, runs off in the grass. I'm not exactly sure where the injury could have occurred, but he might have popped his shoulder out of socket. So Cameron Bobier injured in a non-crash incident, yeah. so, but a save, and it does happen. So now, again, we talk about this championship and Tony Elias' luck. And I mean, listen, he's got 65 points over Bobier, and it was Tony Elias who forced Cameron into that mistake. There's no question about it. But with this red flag restart, it's really up to Josh Hayes to put himself between, put himself between Roger Hayden and Tony Elias. Yeah, but at this point, Greg, you know, it coming into the 65 points was the gap, and his point lead is going to increase no matter what happens. I think Josh right now can see a, a race win in his sight. That's what he wants. Let's see if he can get through this left and this next right the way he had earlier. Now nah, he's just too far back right now uh, to try to do anything with Tony. But right now, Raj has just done the fastest first split, uh, just kind of a mediocre second split for Raj. But uh, let's see how this third split goes. He's able to just kind of keep eking away. And Matthew Schultz doing a great job running fourth overall with a superbike podium in front of him. Bobby Fong, Sylvain Barry, a couple guys. Sylvain Barry, we haven't seen. Jake Lewis, seventh. So good to see Jake Lewis back up there. But uh, he had to come from 10th on the grid or 11th on the grid, Greg. So, but now we got, we got three to go. Raj goes 41-7. Tony Elias. 41-4 though, that's the that's the hard part, yep. is Tony Elias is still within striking distance of Raj Hayden. So 41-7, 41-4, 41-6 for Hayes, 41-5 for Skolton, a 41-8 for Fong. Then it goes back to Barrier and Lewis are all in the 42s, all the way down to Ant West, who did our first of our 43 threes. Ant West back there in 12th spot on the 13th. Just would like to see Raj just be able to get his head down and pull out another second. If he can get a second, you know, right now he's in just around the second. If he can just kind of put in one good solid hard lap here with Tony. Charging. Man, he just say, like, you know, he's he's just so good at just getting stuck in and working hard on not letting somebody go. He races forward all the time. He doesn't really concern himself with what's going on behind him. He wants that he wants to get that first place up in front of him, and that's what he's that's what he's looking for. A little bit, a little bit of 
of protest from the rear end of that GSXR 1000 on that one. And we saw, that's what we kind of saw in the first part of this race. Remember where earlier on, uh, at the beginning of the uh, first part of this race, we saw a lot of movement under initial throttle. And uh, he's got the same kind of thing going. But right now what he's doing is he's pulling Josh Hayes along with him. Matthew Skultz is going along with both of them. Six laps, sprint race to the end after red flag conditions. We have four to go through the chicane, the Moto America chicane, into turn 16, then 17. What do you see? He's just got, they're just, just closing him down. 34-4 now, fastest split from Matthew Skultz in that second split. But look at Bobby Fong. He's not letting Matthew Skultz get away either. Remember yesterday, Bobby took the lead on that Superstock right at the very end of the race. And uh, Matthew Skultz is still within sight of Bobby Fong right now. Sylvain Barry running a very good sixth place. We just saw the pit board for Tony Elias, and that was his indication that Bobier was out. So that will at least give Tony Elias, if he's really struggling, a little bit of breathing room as we take a look at a replay yep. of Tony on the right side of the tire. Coming up out of turn six, this is the spot that's going to put a lot of load on the tire. And you can see he's trying to get that bike short shifted and he gets his knee off in the grass. That What that does there is it really allows him to open up his exit a lot. And um, Roger's just going to have to do everything he can to run the best next two and a half laps that he can to try to keep uh, Tony behind him. You know, Tony getting that message really frees him up. It really frees him up. The championship really now, a 79-point lead. Tony can afford to take a couple chances and still be fine. If he leaves New Jersey with a 51-point lead, he wins the championship. Right now, it's at 79. So he's really got nothing to lose, Greg, by, by just chasing down Rod right now. Roger Hayden is 84 points back in this title chase. So if Tony Elias was finishing second to Roger Hayden, it's only a five-point ding there. That would take it to 79 points, like you're saying. And, and that's really not that big of a deal as Tony really, not only does he race forward, Jason, he looks forward. He understands where he is in this championship fight. He doesn't have a contract for next year with Yoshimura Suzuki. I hear they're working on something. But Tony told me in no uncertain circumstances that he wants to be here in the U.S. He said the only thing that would take him away from racing in Moto America is if Suzuki MotoGP called for some reason and needed his services. Yep, and he'd be a valuable guy. You know, right now that team is struggling quite a bit, and uh, he'd be a valuable guy to at least be doing some testing. He's ran a number of different bikes. Raj got in there good. Tony looked like he was awful sideways in the back shot of that. So we're looking at the lap times. 41.5 for Raj, 41.6 for Tony. So, uh, you know, he's right now Raj is sustaining this pace, but I'll tell you, he does not want to let Tony get too much closer. Raj has not had to deal with fending anybody off. I know he's watching his pit board, but, and it's a very difficult place to pass. He's going to have to close off all of the entries on the last lap. If he comes across the line this next lap and he sees plus zero, last time it was plus 0 0.5. If I'm his crew, I'd put plus zero on there if it's anything less than what it is now because he needs to close off all of his entries and make sure to not let Tony do one of his famous passes. And there's less than two laps to go in this one, so it's winding down pretty quickly. For those people that are waiting for the Real Madrid versus Valencia game, it's coming up after this. Jake Lewis has got by Sylvain Barrier with Danny Essig and Jake Gagne just behind. I'm sure Jake will tell us later on exactly what happened to him. He's been moving himself forward since that horrendous start he just got there. Now, could have, I'm not going to say it had anything to do with the clutch or anything like that. He just maybe got a no. bad jump. He gets down underneath Danny Eslick as they head into turn 12. Nice move for Great Gagne. Move. Gagne is just kind of just methodically getting himself and moving himself forward right now. Good good run by Sylvain Beria here, too, on the, on the restart. Roger Hayden back up front we go. So Roger Hayden, Tony Elias as close as ever. Josh Hayes, could he be the spoiler in this one? Tony closes up on the brakes as he loves to do but not quite the drive that Roger got. Yep, so well. Roger's having his way right now in terms of the lines he wants to run. But here we go, it's the final lap of the race. If you're sitting down, get out of your chair because number 95, Roger Hayden, is trying to win another race in Moto America in the Motul Superbike class. Josh has got a great run on Tony right now. See if he tries to do anything with him up in turn three. Alias is just so hard to pass in the brakes, but Raj, with a tremendous first two, uh, first and second turn sector of this track, as they head down to turn five, he's actually pulled it out a little bit, Greg, from where they came across the line. It was 0 0.4 when they came across, but now we're kind of getting into that territory. Turn seven is going to be a spot where if Tony would have been close enough, he could have taken a shot. He's really only got maybe one, maybe two spots after this that he could really take a shot. One of them would be going in the chicane. Right now, he's not close enough. And the last one's going to be the last corner. And I'm sure Roger will have that last turn closed off pretty good. Roger Hayden looking for his second victory of the year. It was 
race number five in Virginia race one the last time we saw him win a lot of emotions tied up in this one for the Hayden family as Tony Elias right now is starting to lose touch with his teammate on this final lap the question is is this going to be the time when Tony Elias gets his first third place finish of the year as Tony's finished nothing but first and second oh, Josh, is on it. Josh is on it right here Greg goes he going to the chicane but nope and look how close Tony got to Tony yeah, look how oh. close he is. Now Raj has got to close off this last corner. Oh, Tony Elias trying to dive bomb it in. He doesn't do it. So Roger Hayden leading the way. This is closed up to nothing between them. And in one more corner for Roger Hayden. He'll sweep through turn number 19 and head toward the checkered flag and take a victory here at pit race. Awesome finish, Raj. Really good job.